I'll tell you one thing. All of the airports in the world, I try to go an hour, an hour and a half before the flight. But when I go to Dubai airport, I go three hours or four hours before because I can shop, I can wander around, and then, you know, buy my things if I want to buy anything. So it's really an airport that makes you very comfortable. So let's talk about the 21 years of my position as the DGCA, which is Director General of Civil Aviation. Uh, well, it happened in 1978 when I was appointed by a decree from the government of Dubai. And then the journey started for me. Because when I asked my uh, 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 Minister of Defense, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed, that I wanted to ask him a question, he said, don't ask me any question. Now this airport is in your custody. You either make it or you, you fail. So the challenge was there from the day one. And I knew that he wanted the journey to be very successful for the airport and the aviation industry. And it was my job to do that job and get it done. So we started, of course, me and my team started to see where we could really put efforts to make this airport very interesting, very comfortable, and very international. And this was the fact for everyone had to contribute to a better style and a better effort to do this. We wanted the immigration to be fast. We wanted the customs to be proper. We wanted the directions of getting visas and all very right and set. And we wanted people to be comfortable from all angles. And this is few of the things that were our priorities, but there were so many other things. It was about car parking, it was about where you, uh, you know, uh, offload your uh, baggage, how you are met at the airport, how you are checked in to the airport. So there are so many uh, uh, factors that made the airport successful. It was the police, it was Denata, it was the airlines, it was the DGCA, and everybody had to put an effort. So I was the motivator for this. I was motivating people too, that we are going to another step, another stage, and we need to be very competitive, competitive with the other airports. So we started doing, uh, as I told you before, that we wanted the uh, comfort to start from the, the amenities that were there, like the toilets and the, you know, the, the cleanliness of the airport, the, the furniture at the airport, the AC comfort of the airport, the cafes and the restaurant uh, need that people have while traveling. So we all put this together and we started working towards a complete a program where it was done by, the, but by my department, which is the civil aviation. We uh, created comfortable uh, queuing for the immigration. We had very polite and very, uh, you know, uh, uh, people that were very aware of their prestige, so they were not pushed or spoken to uh, hard in a hard way. So all this creates an impression in the people's mind that they went to an airport which was very civilized. And then came the turn of the duty-free. That was a challenge. And my mind switched on to an international standard of the duty-free. Yes, we did not have any, any, any space, but when the uh, the caterer, Albert Bella, moved from the lower part of the airport, which was about 30,000 square feet of area. That's the time my mind started to work, that I need a duty free over here, where it will be about 26, 28 stores, where people will be comfortable, people will have goods at a very competitive prices, people will have a choice of merchandise, and I called a friend who I knew very well, who worked for me as a designer here in Dubai,
called Brian Adam. It's not the singer, but Brian Adam, a guy who worked and lived here. He was a British. He was married and then he moved to Singapore. So the thing that came to my mind, I needed Brian to come to Dubai to see the area and to make me a conceptual design so I can take it to His Highness and show him and surprise him. He did a conceptual design, very well done with, you know, artistic uh, way and giving the definition of each store and everything. And he came back after 15 days. I took that big zipper bag for the drawing and I went to His Highness's uh, majlis. And of course, as soon as he saw the bag, he said, what is this, Bahi? And I said, I have something. You want to see it now or after lunch? And it was lunchtime. He said, no, now. So I opened the, the, the drawing and he looked at it and he said, duty free. But you don't have any place at the airport. I said, no, your highness. We have a place because Al Alba Tabella, who were the caterers, their building was ready. So they moved from this area and they've gone to their new uh, operations uh, building. So he said, good, I'm going to come tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock and see the area. Sure enough, he comes to the airport. The place was messy because it was a kitchen. He looked at it, he loved it, and he said, go ahead, good luck. And we did very well. The first year we did 25 million US dollars. And then I came up with the ideas of raffling the cars. So that was another addition of excitement at the airport and so forth. And then Dubai started to have the name and the buzz around the area and in the world that there is a beautiful airport, no matter how small it is, but it works uh, beautifully. And then we did so many other things at the airport. We did a new runway, another runway, so we have two runways now. We added so many arrivals hall and departures hall. So the airport, by the grace of God, went very well. And I was very successful with my team and I would have been nothing without my team because it's a team effort that made me successful. And of course, always the leader gets the credit, but it is a credit to everyone who was there at that time and worked with me.